Hello everyone, welcome to another Python tutorial series. And in this video, I'm going to create a bot that learns to play the Chrome Dinosaur game. So the tools that we're going to use include the Pygame module and the Python Neat module. So I think a lot of you guys that are following my channel are already very familiar with Pygame. And Pygame is a cross-platform set of Python modules designed for writing video games. So I've made several uh, Pygame games on my channel already. And NEAT, which stands for the Neural Evolution of Augmenting Topologies, is an evolutionary AI program that creates artificial neural networks. So the commands for installing the two modules are pip install pygame and pip install NEAT dash python. So if you follow my channel, you would know that I've talked a lot about module installations. So I'm not going to go too into detail here. So first, let me show you how the game looks when it is finished. Let me quickly run this. And here we have a bot. And if we look to the right side, we have our score, the number of dinosaurs alive, as well as our generation, and the game speed. So we see that after from a few failures, the bot learns and trains itself so that it is able to dodge these cacti. And eventually it'll reach a level, it'll reach a point to where it'll be able to dodge all the cacti. So now let's see how this game is developed. If we close this and we go into our own Python file, let's first import our modules and set up some constants. So we'll import pygame, uh, random, as well as neat. We'll initialize pygame by writing pygame.init. And we'll set up some constants that we'll need later. We'll have a clock is equal to pygame.time.clock. We'll have a black variable equal to 0, 0, 0. Green equal to 0, 255, 0. And these correspond to the RGB uh, values. We'll have white equal to 255, 255, 255. We'll set the FPS equal to 30. Set the font equal to pygame.font.sys font comic sans 30. We'll set the height equal to 450, the width equal to 1000, the window equal to pygame.display.set mode with the width and the height, and we'll set pygame.display.set caption, and we'll set the caption to bot learns to play dino game. So now that we've set these constants, we can make our own game loop. And before, I need to quickly change this to pygame. So we'll define our game loop while true for event in event in pygame. Oops. In pygame. Let's close this. For event in pygame.event.get. If event.type is equal to pygame.quit, then we can quit out of pygame, like that. So, uh, still inside this while loop, but outside of the for loop, we will fill the window with the color white. So that's the white variable that we created before. And we'll tick the clock by our FPS variable, which is 30. And then pygame dot display update to update our display and lastly we need to run our game loop so we'll call the method down here so if I save and run this all we have is a white screen because all we did was set the window to white or the window background so now let's load the images that we're going to be using for this game if we go back up above the game loop, we'll have a run image equal to pygame.image.load. Then it's in my assets folder called dino run onepng and also pygame.image.load assets dino run 2.png. So what I'll do is now 
create a jump image. So when the dinosaur jumps, we're going to be switching the image to pygame.image.load assets I know jump.png and to make things easier I'll just copy this line so I'll copy the python or pygame image.load so now if I create my small cactus I'll paste that into an array and instead of dino jump this is going to be small cactus1.png now for the second one this is going to be small cactus 2.png now if we have large cactus that's pygame dot or actually I'll paste that again changes to large cactus 1 change this to large cactus 2 paste that one more time and large cactus 3 lastly or actually not lastly we'll have a ground equal to pi game image load and we'll have the ground and now lastly we'll say cloud equal to a cloud image so these should be all the images that we need and now to show our actual ground, I'm going to go inside our uh, game loop, create two variables. One is going to be ground x equal to zero, and ground y equal to 330. And now what I could do is I could blit the ground onto the screen. So window.blit the ground at the position ground x and ground y so when we run we'll see that the ground that the dinosaur uh, is going to run on so if I run this we see the ground right there so when simulating the dinosaur run in this game instead of moving the dinosaurs forward we're going to move the ground in the opposite direction so that it looks like the dinosaurs are moving forward so basically, I will have a move speed variable equal to 20. And inside this while loop, I'm just going to let me call this ground. I'm going to set the ground x position and subtract the move speed from it. So now if I run this, now it looks like the ground is moving. But when you uh, notice that the ground goes off the screen because the length of the image is limited. So what we have to do is essentially just reset the image. So after I uh, change the ground x, I want to check if ground x is less than or equal to negative ground get width. Then I'll set ground x equal to zero. And what I'll also do is I'll blit onto the screen our ground, ground x plus ground I get rect dot width and our ground y. So if I save and run this, and this should be an underscore. Now we see that the ground is moving to the left. And it continues to reset once the image goes too far to the left. So it basically looks like the image uh, or the ground is moving forever. So now let's add our clouds. The clouds will move at half the speed as the ground. So I'll set my cloud x equal to width. And I'll also set my cloud y equal to 150. So right underneath where I lit my ground, I'm going to set my clouds. So cloud x minus equal to move speed over 2. 
if cloud x is less than negative 100, then I'll set cloud x equal to the width and then I will split to put the cloud onto the window at the location cloud x cloud y so now if I run this now we see our clouds so that's one and we have another So next we're going to create our obstacles. So we'll leave the dinosaur for last and the obstacles that we're going to be using are cacti. So we have two sizes of cacti in the game, the large ones and the small ones. Now for each size we have three different types as shown on the screen. So there are going to be six total different combinations of cacti. When the cacti show up in the game they will appear randomly with the same probability. And to create the cacti objects we'll create two classes the large cactus class and the small cactus class, where the small one is going to be a child of the large cactus class. So now let's create our large cactus class. We'll have a class large cactus. Define init. And of self image. What's that self.image equal to image? Uh, self dot type equal to random dot randint from zero to two. Self dot rect is equal to self dot image. Self dot type dot get rect. Self dot rect dot x is going to be equal to the width. It's going to be equal to width. And self.rec.y is going to be equal to 250. Now we can define a draw method of self in the window. And window.blit self.image self.type and self.rect. So that is going to be our large cactus. Now for our small cactus. Uh, we'll pass in our large cactus. We'll define a constructor of self and image. And we'll set self.type equal to random.randint 0 to 2. And we'll super init image of self.rect.y equal to 275. So here, uh, the small cactus class will inherit all the properties and methods from the large cactus class, except for the y position, which we set as 275. So here's going to be the idea of creating the obstacle objects. So the obstacles will move with the ground in the same speed and in the same direction. Once they are out of the game window, they'll be removed from the game. Then new obstacles will then be created when all the obstacles have been removed. So first, let's create a list to hold all the obstacles. I'm going to have an obstacles list. Obstacles is equal to an empty list. And now we can create obstacles. So underneath, we'll recreate our clouds. Let's create our obstacles. If the length of obstacles is 0, then if random choice we're going to select a random choice between a small and a large and if it is s which just means small then we want to create a small cactus so obstacles dot append small cactus with the parameter small cactus otherwise if the random choice is L, we're going to append a large cactus. Large cactus. Large cactus. Now we can iterate through obstacles for obstacle and obstacles. For each obstacle, we want to draw it out onto the screen. 
and we want to check direct by x and subtract the move speed from it. So that's going to be moving to the left. Now we can check if obstacle dot rect dot x less than negative obstacle dot rect dot width. Then we'll remove it from our list. So we'll pop it. And when we run, we'll see the cacti with different sizes and types being generated and moving on the ground. So if I run this, let's see. List object has no attribute draw. This should be obstacle.draw. As well as obstacle. And now we see an obstacle right there, cactus right there, cactus right there, and it'll be never ending. Oh, let's see. Self direct that self image type direct. So in our small cactus array at the very top, or a small cactus list, there should be one more small cactus. So what I'll do is I'll copy this. Copy. And I'll paste it. And this should be small cactus three. So if we run this, we should see that our cactuses are all moving to the left. So this is the end of this video. If you have any comments, please put them below at the comment section. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please hit the subscribe button below. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.